And we want to welcome those who are joining us online this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. I hope you had a wonderful time last Sunday with Pastor Matumba. Eh? You had a wonderful time. Thank you, thank you. So we took some rest and uh, with my family and we are back. We thank God for your prayers. Thank you for not missing us. Hallelujah. And uh, we're looking forward to serve you. Just before I minister, on a serious note, we, we don't take this for granted. We are so grateful to the Lord to be pastors of these ministries. You know, you are a leader because there are people who believe in you. There are people who are following you. You can stand and make a lot of noise and say, I'm a leader, I'm a leader, but who's following you? Especially your family, because those are the first people who must believe in you. You know, if they are not there and then to follow you, don't even bother and to stand in front of people and say, I'm a leader. Because if they themselves they don't believe in you, and uh, you can't do anything. I'm so grateful that the Lord has given me favor. I'm still a father. I'm in my tabler's family. And um, it's so wonderful to wake up in the morning and your wife says, I still love you. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm grateful to the Lord for that. And uh, above all that, I'm so grateful to be your pastor. Come on, give yourself a hand this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Well, welcome if you are joining us for the first time. If you are joining us for the first time, you are wondering, where's my wife? She's ministering in Midrand. Praise the name of Jesus. Asiluanga, Aguna Luto, Lisisavuta, Liti Be, Nyamchela Wena. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you are joining us for the first time, we are in a year of revolution. Our theme for 2023, it is revolution. And city, Ziachiga is into. Hallelujah. Masichige is into in our families. Masichige is into in our communities. Masichige is into in our finances. The way we do things is into Masichige. You cannot just do life as normal. I pray and I decree that your life will totally be changed and be changed for the better in 2023. But the truth of the matter is you cannot experience revolution at the distance. You must engage, hallelujah, which is the month, which is the topic, you know, of March. Our theme for March is simply means engage. When you look at that word engage, the synonyms of that word simply means to commit, you know, to get involved. You need to get involved. Don't be, you know, a stranger. Don't be a spectator. You know, to engage also means to join, to participate, to sign up, you know, to occupy. Don't allow a space, you know, to exist, you know, in, 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 your, in your environment. But in the language of engineering, you know, the word engage simply means interlock or to come into gear with. When you look at the picture behind me, you know, the teeth of one log wheel, those things, you call them log wheel. You know, for them to operate, they need to engage one another and the machine will function. Your engine, your car, it operates or it functions because there is what we call log wheels. From your engine, some of the log wheels, they, 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 they are connected to your wheels so that when the engine runs and the whole car, it is running because there's engagement. Are you with me, child of God? That is how you transform the lives of people. That is how you transform your entire life. You must be engaged both as the body, spirit, and soul. You cannot just look after your body and neglect your spirit man. Your spirit man must also be engaged in your body and your mind. Don't feed your mind and neglect your spirit and your body. Do you know those type of people that I'm talking about? When they speak, they speak sense. But, you know, when you look at their action, they are totally different because they are not engaged. You know, it's like you are separated. The, the, the other part of your body is functioning in a different way. The other part of your body is going that direction. Your mind is going that direction. You speak something else, but you need to engage. And that is why I have come up with a subtopic this morning that simply says, play your part. You need to play your part. Listen to me, child of God. We all have a part to play in the body of Christ. Mark my word. We all, 
educated or not, white or black, we all have a part to play. Our role and our responsibility is to identify our gifts and play our part. You see, I want you to mark this. Church was never meant to be a place of spectators. Can I say that again? Church was never meant to be a place of spectators. The reason why the church is not effective and has failed to make an impact in the community, it is because we have a lot of spectators than participants in the house of the Lord. You know, that is why sometimes I love moving around here. I'm moving around and I'm checking. While we worship, we have those who are just spectators. While we raise our hands, we have those who are just wandering. We have spectators during worship. You call for prayer meeting. Spectators, they stay at home. Even when we are praying in the house of the Lord, you've got those who are just spectators. You have spectators during giving. It's just incredible. Like, you are not even a part of that. And you don't feel anything bad because it's like it is a role and the responsibility of other people. It does not affect me. Do you know what I'm talking about? Because we have become spectators when things are happening. You know, I was shocked when I was given, you know, the, 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 the database of the church. So on paper, our church membership is over 20,000 across all campuses. But you'll ask yourself even this morning, where are the other people? Where are they? Because we have taken a church as one of those things that I'll take casual, by the way, thing. I am not a part of it. Even if I am not there, they will not see anyway. You know why we don't see anyway? It is because you are a spectator. You are not those who participate. That is why you think when you are not there, it does not make a difference. And I was even shocked. I was even shocked when I asked, you know, about the finances. By the way, you need to know I'm not that pastor who is involved in everything. I don't do that. You know, they, they, they take care of those things. I get my salary just like anybody else. I'm not so I wanted to know for, you know, for the first time in five years, I just wanted to know how are the finances and who are the tithers in the house of the Lord? And I was shocked. Over to only 7.8% of Hope Restoration Ministries are the tithers. That simply means eight in hundred people only eight are tithing. The rest, they don't participate. They don't participate and we are so comfortable. As long as we come, we come and then to say, I know that building will be there. I know the lights will be on. Some of us, we don't even bother why the lights are on. Who cleans the building? Who pays the bill? As long as I come on Sunday, I grab my seat, you know, is it just some or it went around, which it has become less than a dollar, by the way. We are just fine. I'm saying to you, all of us, we need to play our part. We need to play our part. I think it was William Shakespeare who once said these words. Listen what he said one day. He said, all the world is a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. Now this guy, he's looking at life as a play. Maybe let me simplify that when it comes to Christianity. Christianity, as I said, it is not a spectator's activity. 
Christianity is a play or a body of Christ. Bamba, God the Father is the author. Jesus is the main character or the star. Christians are, are participants. The world is the stage. Now, you need to see yourself exactly as that picture. That the world is the stage. And where now you are a piece of a puzzle. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That is what we say. Look at yourself and you must see yourself as a piece of a puzzle. That has been faithfully and wonderfully made. You are so unique. You have been cut and designed by God. If you are not the part of a bigger picture, the picture it is missing. Are you with me, child of God? See yourself as a puzzle and if you are not here as a puzzle on this big stage we are in a serious problem the problem is that we don't see ourselves as puzzles and that is why we don't play our part on the stage of life you are a player Wayne. God has given you a role God has given you a part. That is why your fingerprints compared to mine, they are not the same. Because God has cut you in a different design. Oh, do you know what? The world needs this part of a puzzle. And I'm going to design Uma Tebula. Look at what my Tebula is doing today. I am playing my part. And God said today, you know, I'm going to design Uma Tenjwa. Uma Tenjwa is playing his part. And I'm going to design Uma Mdlanga And Uma Mdlanga must play this part. The question is, are you playing your part? Which part are you? Because when I look at that picture... There's a part that is missing. And the question, which part is missing? And you compromising the whole stage? And you compromising the whole body by not playing your part? Think about it. Think about it. Never underestimate yourself. You are special in the house of the Lord. You are special in the kingdom of God. You are not here by mistake. You are not a coincidence where now, where now you have been designed and fearfully, wonderfully made by God. People might say to you, you are good for nothing. But listen to me right now, right here, where now you are a design of God. What is cut? What are you puzzle? A unique and you can't tell a girl, but you need to make sure you discover that and you play your part. Am I helping somebody this morning? Now Paul, he's addressing exactly what I'm addressing in the book of Romans. He says, while he was writing to the book of Romans, to the Romans and the Corinthians, regarding the human body that has many parts, but functioning as one. Before I read that scripture, he says, he explained how the church, the body of Christ, is made up and joined together. And he firmly emphasizes that each believer is crafted into one body and appointed to fulfill a definite function, which is the body, the church, you know. And it says, if we are together, we become healthy as the body of Christ. And he goes on in this scripture before we read. He says, no one must think highly of himself than others. We all important in the body. Now, let me read in verse 3 of chapter 12. Now, it reads thus. I give each of you this warning. He says, don't think you are better than you really are. But be honest. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself. Measuring yourself by the faith God has given you. What a warning, Bazalwan. You see, the thing that destroys the body of Christ, you have those who think they are better than others. You have those who think they are more special than others. And that is why we end up looking down on others. Ufes for Liti. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body, which is the church. We are many parts of one body. And we all belong to who, Bazalwane? Speak to me. We belong to? We belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts 
for doing certain things. How, Bazalwani? Well, we do certain things because God has given us grace so that we can do certain things well. You know why you do other things so well and that other people can't do it? It is because God has given you that grace. It is the grace that you are able to worship and then in, in such a best way. It is the grace of God that God has given unto you. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, one translation says to exalt, it says speak out with as much faith as God has given you. And it goes on, it says, if your gift is serving others, what do you need to do, Bazalwane? Serve them well. Don't bully people. You can't say you want to be an usher, but I will not see you. You want to be an usher, but you've got a, a serious face. Probably you need to change that and go to security because that is where we need people with a serious face. No, I'm very serious, Bazalwane. Look at all of our answer. We selected them. We want nice faces and smiley faces. And look at all our securities. We want serious and ugly guys. <laughs> and do that part very well. So if you serve, serve them well. And it says, if you are a teacher, you need to do what, Bazalone? Teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, you must do what? Encourage them. If it is giving, give generously. Now, I think we need to fix that because there are people who thought there are people who are supposed to give in the house. I use a left verse, which there are those who've got a gift of giving. Uh, <laughs> we all have to give in the house of the Lord. We all have to pray in the house of the Lord. But there are those who feel, you know what, I think God has called me to pray more. You understand? But all of us, we pray. We all have to give. But at the same time, there are those who have a special gift of giving. Little Bible, if you have a special gift of giving, give generously without any strings attached. control. You give generously and you forget because that is your gift. So the Bible says we need to do that because that is your part as the body. And it goes on. It says, if God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. If you have been given leadership abilities, take your responsibility seriously. I think this is where I fall in, Barcelona. I have been given leadership abilities and I'm taking my responsibility seriously. That is why for the past 22 years, I have never taken you for granted. I have never stood on this pulpit without preparation. You have never seen me. If you know, I'm a verse, I would leave you this. Leave you have never seen me doing that because I take you seriously. I take my leadership responsibility seriously. I know that there are people who have come to this place and they want serious stuff. And I can't gamble on this card saband. If you are a leader, maso tlarang is card saband. Lo kulo munde si ngai zwa. Niangene ndabe niangene niangene ndabe niangene ni. Now we are lending. Take your leadership. I am solely South Africa. Hang a cooler in Nigeria. They just selected a new president. Good luck to you, Nigerians. I hope the man will take his responsibility seriously. But if you are a leader, even in the political space, take your role seriously. Maso kanganga bantu la, maso kalanga bantu, maso kuwa corruption. Yes, you call yourself a leader. 
You say you are a pastor, you are a prophet. But people around you, they are so poor. The only man who is successful is this man. Everything revolves around you. Yet you are saying you are a leader. Listen to me. If you are a leader in the environment that you are living in, the people around you, they must become better. They must become better. They must be elevated because there's a leader. That is why a king, it is known by his subjects. You don't say a king is great because of his muscles. But you look at the subjects of the king. When they are happy, when they are doing well, we say that is a good king. Don't come here and say you are a great leader. Yet people around you are suffering. You are the only one enjoying life. And people are suffering in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you're going to give us real leaders. We pray and we prophesy you're going to give us real leaders, especially in Africa. Leaders who are going to play their part in the name of Jesus. Do you receive it this morning? Come and give God a big hand of praise. We need people who are going to play their part. Now Paul goes on in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 27. He's talking about this thing of playing our part. He says in verse 12, you know, the human body has many parts. But the many parts make up one whole body. Do you see that, Pastor One? Look at that picture there. It has many parts. But all those parts, they do what? They make one body. So it is with the body of Christ. We've got many parts. We've got many different gifts here in the house of the Lord. And it goes on in verse 12, verse 14. Yes, I'm skipping some verses here. Yes, the body has many different parts. Not just one part, okay? Not just one part. In verse 17, go to verse 17. If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? Do you see now how he's addressing this matter? He says, imagine if the whole body was an ear. I mean, we'd be sitting here, because the whole body is in there. Your whole body, if it was a nose, You'll be an ugly strict, uh, 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 structure. But God, who he begs into, and when he has. In verse 18, it says, But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. In Tebe, I never eat a min and fruit la penya win. Ah, Abazalwan. In Yaw, I never eat a min and fruit la wun and Tebecon. God has placed it in their right position. Some of you, you are an I. Be happy with that role. Be happy with the role that you are playing. Don't fight other people. Oh, they are something else and then when you are not. Praise the name of Jesus. And that was verse what? Verse 18. Ne? And verse 19 says, how strange a body will be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Verse 22. In fact, some parts of the body that seems weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. Every part. It goes on. It says, even those parts that we hide, they are more important. They may not be visible, but they are important. It says, even those that are weak, and you can go on and go on and go on and go on kick, go on and go on and go on and go on. Have you ever seen that? Oh, I'm not sure. 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 They are very important. I'm not sure. I expose it. Abanyebe no bandabasha. 
Nidala ngezinto. Nidala ngezinto ipukayo. Madala ngezinto ipukayo. Praise the name of Jesus. It's a sermon for another day. But all that I'm saying, oh, there are those parts that are visible. There are those parts that are not visible. But all of them are important. Don't fight to be a pastor, to be on public. The problem of the church, everybody wants to be on stage. It's not about you. It's not about you. In the whole body, there are different parts. Some of the parts are not visible, but they complete the body. Are you with me? Some of the parts are fragile, but they complete the body. You've got those who are not good speakers in the house of the Lord, but they can play a vital role. You can see the weak in the house of the Lord because there are those in the house of the Lord, they are so weak, they are easily broken. And you can play a part and cover us in that area. There are other areas where we cannot reach, Mazalwane. As pastors, we need you when, oh, Elisho, you know, who can do what and go and see those people. You look around, everybody in the house of the Lord is very important. We cannot be preachers, all of us. We cannot be worshippers, all of us. We need to find a part and play that part. If all of us are going to be preachers, who's going to listen? If all of us we want to be worshippers, who's going to listen to all of you? Find your part and play your part. Strengthen the body of Christ. We need one another like never before. Play your part in the body of Christ. The question that I know you are asking this morning, maybe before I even give you that, let me just teach you something about the coat of arms. Do you know the coat of arms? Some of you, you know it, but you don't even know the explanation of it. The coat of arms. I'm giving you a homework to go and look and study it, the, the coat of arms. So it doesn't show there, but actually it is written in Khoisang language. Okay? It's written in Khoisang language. I can't even try to read those way. Okay? It's Khoisang. But simply means diverse people unite. What a slogan. What a motto. That we can be different. As Shangani people, vendor people, no man say you are man. I am in in Pele and Delhi. When I join sin, come 2024, ilaba kuvu na machanga na ma vendor ka national anthem. Oh, I'm serious, Mr. Lord. I'm very serious about that. For the past 30 years, I see cotton. Mashanga na ma vendor. Since you own it, he he ni angagalenga ona. You own it. He ni kwa na ina. It is South Africa. Mr. President, help us. We also want to be in the national anthem. Mavenda na machangane. Rikoto do jena na rine. Anepo. Rikoto do jena. Because we can also play our part. Everybody must play their part in the body. Every, what I'm trying to say, Bazaron, all of us are important. It doesn't matter, it can be a small nation. All of us are important in the body. The question is, in the next 10 minutes, how to play your part? I know you are asking that. I have heard you from this, that I need to play my part, but how do I do that? I'm glad you have asked that. Number one, you need to see the bigger picture. See the bigger picture. The Bible says the human body, the human body has many parts. But the many parts make up one whole body. It is very important to see the bigger picture. If you can see the bigger picture, you'll be able to play your part. 
The problem is that when you always see yourself, have you ever seen when they give you a picture that you have taken with your friends, when they give you the picture, the first thing that you want to do when you want to look at yourself. <laughs> that is why we fail to make an impact. Instead of looking at the whole picture, but your mind always says to you, look at yourself. Sometimes you even forget who are the people who were there because you want to look at yourself. The problem of the church is that thing. It is always, what is it that is there for me? What's for me? What's for me? It's not what's for us. If I don't give, what is happening in the house of God? If I give, what is happening? But the thing that makes you not to see the importance of playing part, it is because you have not seen the bigger picture. You only see yourself seated on that chair. You don't look at the expense of the ministry as a whole. But if you can look at the bigger picture, begin to ask yourself, how much does it cost to run a ministry like this? How many people have been employed by this ministry? How many people are getting salaries? See a bigger picture. As long as you feel like you are not alone, you are you with me? There is a security 24-7 who are making sure they protect this place. I, 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 I just wanted to be a part of this. 250,000 just in this campus monthly that we pay for security to make sure that this place is protected. 250,000. Those are the monthly bills. And you need to look at the picture. But uma my boni when I learn to learn. And then Do you know what I'm talking about? Because you know that's what people they think. They think like that. You don't think about you know the 80 people, 80 people that we have employed. Who are on, on, on the payroll of this ministry every month, you know, and 80% of them, if not 90, they are also in their medical aids. You don't think about that. I have not even included the, the, the 60 students, young people, as is stipends every month. The girl who stood here with this little one, she's a teacher of his Sunday school, and she's working with the children full time. Writing immaterial full time. She is paid by ministry, this young girl. And have you seen how she has produced? Can you see the skill? Because we want the best for you and your children. But the problem is that we only see everything. Hey, Bazalwan. If you be a young man, Benizoba and in a building angel, there are people who are still in the tent. And the ministry has been running for over 20 years. Moreover, everything that comes in, it goes to the pocket of the pastor. I'm going to Yeah. All right, then I'm going to take a little bit of credit here. So see the bigger picture. Are you with me, Mazalon? See the bigger picture. And number two, don't just see the bigger picture. Know your part in that bigger picture. It's a bigger picture, but which part are you? It's a bigger picture, but which part are you? Verse 14 says, yes, the body has many different parts. Not just one part. And Romans 12, 12, 12, 6 says, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. What is your gift in the house? What is it that you can do best? You know, man, here I know. You know, there are... I, I mentioned it saying, I said, I am not an academic. Me, I am not an academic. Even I say high school, but he is a student. So don't expect me to study for a PhD. Forget, I'm not going there. <laughs> you can pray and fast with my table like I told you, PhD. I'm not even going there. I, I, I don't desire it. As a matter of fact, there, there was an organization that wanted to honor me in a doctorate, not a doctorate. Here. Nifunugu ngenzu doktama kwenzenjani. Nizongfageli pressure. 
the moment they call me Dr. Chris Matebula, they expect this unique, you know, English. And I'm okay because I know who I am. I know where I'm coming from. I know what I can do. I'm, I'm comfortable on my shoes. I'm a preacher, Barcelona. I'm a leader and the preacher. You can wake me up in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, and say, Fuga Matabulu Shumail, I will preach because this thing is in me. I am called for this. I am designed for this. It is my assignment. You ask me to confront things, I will confront them without fear. That's me. Futangnavalo. Sabiluto. That is my part. What is your part? You need to discover that part. Open to jail, Utiabana. Bangalwa nam, got a man in Genela. I neg bang tint. Uma sem petting pempeyam in Jonga Matensho. I neg bang tint. I neg. Nyang Tolabazalon. You need to know who you are. You need to know what part of the body. The question is do you know who you are? Because if you don't know and you don't play that part, you are compromising the entire body. Have you seen how the young people have done the announcement? Did you realize the past two weeks they've changed? I want to tell you, I strongly believe that there was a piece that was missing. And somebody came, I have not asked them, but I know there is somebody who came in and said, we can start doing things like this. And that person came as a puzzle. And boom, fitted very well. Look at how they've done the announcement in a beautiful way. Don't compromise. I am calling upon you. Some of you are so gifted. Some of you are loaded. That's good. They are loaded. But look at you. Instead of playing your part, you are not playing your part. You are loaded, but you are so stingy. God has blessed you. But look how stingy you are. Compromising the entire body. I'm asking you, play your part. Some of you, when you come through the door there, you see the staircase. Have you ever asked yourself, why is that staircase there? We are small on the step, is go good, I see him down. Have you ever asked yourself, why is he lying down? It is because we still have to finish the building. But we don't have funds. Because the past three years of COVID, we emptied the account because we wanted to help the people. We said we'll rather save the lives of people. We'll rather keep the jobs of people who are working for the ministry. We never retrenched even a single person. We took the money that we're supposed to use for the building. We invested in the lives of people because people matter to God. But we still need you to play your part, sir. All that I'm asking, I'm saying to you, be generous. Be generous. We need you. We need you. So I said, see the bigger picture? And then number two, know your part. And don't just know your part. Know that you are a part. You don't just know a part, but you know that you are a part. You are not everything. You are a part. Because there are those people, but they are everything. When now you are a corpse in every funeral. Oh, it was a lot. Know that you are a part. And if you know that you are a part, that will humble you. That will humble you. Because I, I, I'm trying to deal with this spirit that says, Mzaba Kombis, and I'm trying to answer. And you practice. Yes, we're going to miss you because you have been a part of this ministry. But you cannot hold God hostage. He's the creator of the universe. If there's a missing part, he can still design another part. He can still design another part. Let me, let me put it very clear to you. The devil used to be a worshiper. And he was full of pride. He was kicked out of heavens. And God had to design other worshippers. Have you seen them this morning? They were worshipping. They took the place of Lucifer. 
Listen to me. You don't want God to design another part just because we are you did not play your part. Play your part. Yekubula wa pride. Pastor Nungunungul can replace me anytime. God can replace me anytime. You look at the preachers in this house. Your Johnson, your Pesimungwai. Everybody, God, God can replace me just like that. If I go astray, there are many people who can replace me just like that. Overnight. God does not run short of resources. Never forget that. All that I'm asking, play your part. So I said, see the bigger picture, know your part. Know that you are a part. And after knowing that you are a part, play that part. Are you with me? Verse 26 of, of uh, the book of Corinthians says, if one part suffers, I love that. It says, if one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. When you are suffering, as a part, all of us will suffer. That is why we need to love one another and we need to be gentle, Bazalwan. When your finger is hurting, the whole body hurts. When you decide not to be in the right position, the whole body is suffering. When you don't play your part, the whole body it is suffering. I'm saying this because this is putting me to my last point where I need to say, bring everything you've got. Bring everything you've got. Bring your skill in the house of the Lord. Your soul, your body, your mind. Look at the slides there. I even said, please. We don't just need your money. We need your mind as well. God needs your spirit. It's very simple to say Nancy Maliam. But we, we are also concerned with your well-being. We still want to be close to you because it's very simple and say, here's my money. We are not after your money. We are after your spirit, your body, and your money. You must know the order. If we win you, we are happy. Because we know that when you are happy, you will give with a smile. But when you are hurting, we are hurting. I'm saying this because there's a role that we need to play to one another. Those of you who keep on attending second service, you should know this brother. We have passed on. They'll project the picture now. Because I want to close with this so that we can understand what is happening. The brother on the left, we know the lady, Elena, they, they sit on that corner. The brother has passed on, Mazalwan. The brother passed away, I think it was on Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. What a painful thing. Put the picture. Take it out, please. Okay. I'm saying this because I want us to pray for Elena and the children. I went there yesterday to this family. I thought I would be there just for 30 minutes and uh, I'll be out leaving a prayer. But I found myself there for five hours because there were some complications. And I want to also use this as a part of a request and a lesson to some of us. Elena married to this wonderful gentleman from Ghana who desired to be, to be buried here in South Africa. And she wants to fulfill that. Family came in, said that is not going to happen. We want our son to Ghana. And the Western countries, they've got, those of you, you know where, what I'm talking about. You've got a culture. You can keep a person for three years.